Hello and welcome to another budget and legged video. Now, what we have today is a 2010 Fiat Panda. And the problem is he can't go into reverse. Well, he can, but the car basically stops. Well, not stops, but it can't go back any further. And as you can see, the problem is the wheel goes forward okay. But when you go back, bastard. When you go back, that's typical, it's not doing it now. <laughs> what it was doing was it was completely locking. So you couldn't, you couldn't reverse back. Now, I think the lining or something's come off the actual uh, brake shoe, I'm not sure. So now is the time to put your answer down. But this was locking, maybe the fact that I've lifted it up and I spun the wheel a few times, maybe I've like loosened it again, but it's, there's a problem anyway. And essentially what was happening is you'd only be able to turn this about 90 degrees and then it would just lock solid as, as, as if you put the handbrake on. Um, and it was only doing it on this side, it wasn't doing it on the far side. So we'll whip off this wheel and we'll see exactly what's wrong. Now, obviously this was a really dangerous thing because if this happened as you're going forward, well, good luck. You know more Fiat Panda and possibly you know more you. So we're going to have to check it out. We can't just rely the fact now that it is spinning and you think, oh, it's spinning, it's okay. You cannot rely on that at all. And if we do find a problem here, we're obviously going to replace everything the far side. So if we do find problems with brakes, you replace them both sides. It's a no-brainer. So what I'm going to do, just for the hell of it, I'm just going to see if there was any um signs of anything hitting or rubbing where it shouldn't to maybe stop the wheel and i cannot see any signs whatsoever and it's still not doing it i reverse this about 10 times outside and i lock the wheel about three or four times so i turn the camera on and now it's not doing it but not to worry. We still have a problem in here somewhere. Now what we need to do is take off these two little locating tabs. So what locates the wheel, they're two uh, 12 mil. And what that also does is that holds the actual drum on. So once they're off, couple of hits with the hammer. Well, that came off quite easy. Now let's see and there we go, I was right. The lining, I'll show you closer, but the lining had came off. That's what I thought would happen. And essentially, it was uh, trapping itself. So as you can see, we still have the lining on this side, which is very thick. And if they were both that thickness, I wouldn't be replacing them at all. Um, and as you can see from this side, well, we have no lining on at all. So what must have been happening is, as you were turning backwards, this was sliding up and locking itself between the drum and the actual brake itself. So, and as you were driving forward, it was obviously falling back down into a position where it wasn't getting caught and reversing, it was getting caught. So it was a really dangerous thing to have anything. And I mean, anything floating around in here is obviously really dangerous because if that lock's going forward well then you're in a world of shit so what we're going to do is we're going to have to replace the brakes we just check the cylinders yeah cylinders are leaking too as you can see so we're going to replace the brake shoes and the cylinders on both sides because you just have to it makes so much more sense to do that. Right, what I'm gonna to do to make my life a lot easier, I should be able to take this part off, the actual bearing. It's just, you don't have to, but it makes your life so much easier putting these shoes back on. So I'm just gonna uh, get off this cover and take out the bearing. Now you need something small and flat just to pop off this cover. I've got an old screwdriver which you can hit. So you can actually hit this screwdriver. Um, you shouldn't need to hit it hard, just some light taps and keep spinning it as you're tapping it around 
Hope I'm not getting in the way of the camera. There we go. And there we go. One cap off. Now it looks like a 32 mil. So we'll just get a 32 mil and see. And there we go, 32 it is. Like I said, it's not essential to take this off. You don't have to, you can work around it. But as you can see, for a second, it takes to undo that bolt. We've got a big flat washer at the back. You can see how much more room we have. And we're not gonna be struggling trying to work around the actual bearing. We can see everything so much easier. And this is the same with every kind of rear brake system. They're all more or less the same within reason. You have a cylinder at the top, you have a couple of springs that hold everything together. It stops everything pulling out. You have a couple of mounting points here. You've got like a special spring and a washer that actually holds the shoe to the actual backing plate to stop it from flapping around. Then you have the handbrake cable, which can be really annoying to get in and out. And then you have the adjuster here. Some cars have the adjuster at the bottom, it, but you know, and they have them at the side. It's more or less the same kind of setup in most um, rear drum brakes within reason. You know, once you've done one, you can kind of really do any of them. Right, now is a good time to take pictures if you're unsure with your phone or something like that so you know where everything goes back. Or what you can also do is strip the other side first and leave it open like this and then you can kind of work off that one. Uh, what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna actually take off the whole mechanism as one because it just makes life so much easier and I'm gonna drop all the tools on the floor at the same time. Now, there's a couple of little tools I've got here which I'll show you. You don't really need them, they just make your life so much easier. So this is kind of the first one. As you can see that, it's like a funny pair of pliers. Hopefully the camera will zoom in on that. Focus, should I say. Um, let's just get it close so you see the make of it. There we go, that's the make of it. And what this does is, which is really easy, it clamps around the spring and you can hold it, twist it 180 degrees. And as you can see, it releases. Don't do what I just did and drop the spring and I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> but as you can see, it's actually in the top of it, it's, it's caught the little washer, as you can see there. And it just, you don't need it, you can use just vice grips and stuff like that. But with that little gadget, it just makes life so much easier. And then the pin comes out the far side there. So we do the same with the other one. This time don't drop the spring. There we go. Now, and they, they will actually hold the two shoes on to the, um, the actual car and the backing plate. Now, as you can see, everything's quite loose. It's just the spring tension on it now, which is holding it. Let's get a screwdriver and unhook it from the bottom. There's one and there's two. As you can see, this will come out as one now. Now, if we had the bearing there, it just makes life a lot harder. Um, this bit can be quite annoying now to get this uh, handbrake cable off. You can see there's a spring. I have to push the spring back and just flick it over the little lip. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to film this and I'm gonna get in the way of the camera, but essentially, well, I might be able to, if I just pull it back, pull the spring back. It's hard to do while I'm trying to film. Well, there we go. Pull the spring back, unhook it, and as you can see, it comes out in one complete unit, so you know how to put it back. Now do that on the bench. That's the easiest way I find, and then you just install it as a complete unit as well. It just makes life a lot easier. Now, the next thing we wanna do is just give this plate a quick clean. We can actually, we'll clean the plate up at the end. Um, the next thing we wanna do is get out of the cylinder. Now, this is where it can potentially cause a problem because the bolts that are on it could be old and rounded and they can be an absolute nightmare to take off or they can be really, really easy. The first thing I wanna take off is I'm gonna loosen the bleed nipple. I'm gonna take out the bleed nipple so I can actually undo the bottom screw. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Once you release the actual bleed nipple, 
what I suggest you do to stop all the fluid from leaking is, is wedge your brake pedal with a bar to the seat. So I'll show you that. Hopefully you can see I've got a bar there pushing against the brake pedal. And what that does is that stops all the brake fluid coming out and it's essentially like a bung almost. And it just means you don't have to bleed all the brakes, you just bleed the brakes you're working on. Right, so here's our brake cylinder. And as you can see, we have the bleed nipple there and the main pipe comes in here. But the problem is the spanner hits on the bleed nipple. So you can't loosen the bolts or you can't loosen the main brake pipe. And if you try, you're gonna break something or you could actually even round it and cause yourself an absolute nightmare. So just completely unscrew it, take it out of the way. That will then release the spanner to actually undo the brake pipe. That's what I'm gonna do now. The bleed nipple is an 8 mil and this is an 11 mil. So I'm just going to release the bleed nipple first. Now we're going to get a bit of fluid coming out, just what's in the line and stuff, but it won't keep coming out. I know you can't see this, but I hope you got the idea from me showing you the other one. It's just the bolts. There's no way I can get the camera in there to see properly because you do not want this, this bolt here that holds the brake line on rounded because if it is, you're going to be in a world of trouble to even try and get it off, never mind put it back on again. Now, as you can see, well, you can't see, but you can see the spanner. It's really nice and easy to turn this. I'm not struggling. I've got plenty of room. It's gonna come off and it's gonna go back on, which is what you want. And there it is. Just right there. And as you can see, there's no more fluid coming out there. If we didn't have the brake pedal wedge, it'd be dripping fluid and it wouldn't take long to completely empty the system and then you have to bleed all the brakes it's just it's a lot more hassle you don't need now on these particular cars you can't get to the two 10 mil bolts that are behind here one of them is, is in a really awkward place one of them you can get to one of them you can't and again these two bolts are really important because that's what holds the cylinder on so the way to take them off is you get a six mil allen key and you take off the two bolts that hold the back plate on now again, you have to be careful because if these go on you, you you're in trouble. Um, and unfortunately, you really do have to take them off because um, it just makes life so much easier. But it's always that scary thing where are they going to move or aren't they? You can maybe get a spanner on the back of these bolts, but they, they really are quite rusty, even on this uh, 2010 car. So you'd really want to get a socket on them so you don't round them. So they're two off now. Should be able to take this down and spin it around. Now, hopefully, I should be able to just spin it around. And you can now see these two 10 mil bolts right there. And what that allows me to now do is get a socket on them. And these should hopefully come off quite easy. There's a plate in behind here and it's half covering one of these bolts and uh, it's just going to make it very difficult to get them off without doing it like this. But if your car is older than this, you could be in a world of trouble because if these bolts are rusty and the two bolts I've just taken off are rusty, well then unfortunately, you're not going to be having a good time. So there we go. This cylinder should now come off, but it doesn't want to. That was well stuck in there. Now, one leaky old horrible cylinder, which is going to be replaced. Right, all our parts are here. Now, what I've gone for is I've gone for a new cylinder, new shoes and a new fitting kit. It's always best to do that. Sometimes you can't actually get the fitting kits. So you can only really get them from the main dealers. And even sometimes you even struggle just to get the fitting kit. The main dealers like to sell an awful lot. But anyway, if you can, it's always just best to. But regardless of the fitting kit, definitely new cylinders and new shoes even if the shoes look good and the cylinders are bad replace everything or if the shoes are, are bad and the cylinders good just replace them so we have a new cylinder here and simply pop it through put the two bolts back put the two bolts in first before you tighten anything and hopefully you can see that with the two bolts in right i like to take the bleed nipple out now because you're going to have to take it out to put the to put the pipe back in, but it's just easy to do it while it's turned at you. Take out the bung, flip it over, 
No. Now be careful putting these bolts back. Again, screw them in by hand. Make sure they go in by hand first. And put both of them in before you tighten anything. Because these two, these two bolts are really important. That's what holds everything together. So you don't want to cross thread them or anything like that. Now, they're both in. Now we can tighten them. Now we just need to put the pipe back on, which I might get in the way in the camera, but just make sure it's lined up. That's all you got to do. It's the hardest part. And again, screw it in by hand first, just to make sure it's definitely going in. Now, it's very easy to over tighten that. You don't want to do that. If you're unsure, give it a good squeeze. Once you go to bleed the brakes, if it's leaking from there, you can just very, very gently tighten that up. What we've got to do now is we've got to clean all the crap off here. Now, you have to do this whether, even if your cylinder is burst or if, even if it hasn't. So you want to give all this, get all this crap and crud off. So wipe as much as you can first. This is all quite wet, else normally I'd maybe just get the airline and blow it in, but it's all wet. Spray brake cleaner. And the brake cleaner really will get all the crap off. Brake cleaner's good stuff. Be careful of the ABS sensor here too. You don't want to damage that. Now that will all just kind of dry off but as you can see with a few strike pads on the actual backing plate itself and what you want to do is get a little bit of copper grease and just put it on them strike pads stops the brakes making noise you only want to do it on the strike pads nowhere else just the six little pads done now we need to build the actual brakes up and we'll do that on the bench right here we have our old brakes and here we have our new brakes now what you want to do is you want to get them the right way around first because there is an upside and you know there's a right and wrong way of getting them so you want to make sure you're getting the right way for a start uh, what i think has actually happened with this one because I am quite surprised with a fairly new vehicle that this one's actually uh, gone that quickly. Someone's had a go at the lip, and you can see that, inside the drum. Now they do get a lip there and you can just kind of grind them off, that's not a problem. But someone's obviously done that and maybe what's happened was, as they were taking this off, the actual um, braking part here was, could have come loose, they could have cracked, they could have done a lot of things. And then after a few weeks or whatever, as it was driving, this has finally come off. That's what I think's happened, but it's hard to say. Anyway, all we need to know is that we need to replace it. So, here's our new brakes. And here is our new fitting kit. Now these four bits we don't need yet. All we need is these three springs, our brakes and our parts from our old ones. Now you have to be careful because these springs are really strong. Um, and they can just kind of spring and pop out and you can lose everything. That's why, like I said, if you're unsure, just uh, take pictures or open the other side and kind of keep a reference that way. Let's just get these into a bit better light. Now, there's a few ways you can take these off uh, and there's no real kind of proper way, but the kind of the best way I'm gonna do this one maybe is just allow that to, so what it is I pushed, pushed off that side to, to release the spring tension because this top spring is the serious tension on the top spring i still can't even get that off right so what we can do now is we can undo the actual adjuster get the adjuster out of the way hopefully yeah now the adjuster's out of the way that should release a lot more spring there we go once that's out of the way should just be able to take these springs off now with this adjuster what you can sometimes do is lift the adjuster and the spring off together now hopefully i can do that springs in my way so let me get this spring out first we don't need it so i've got new ones now hope now you see that i pushed it down and you can keep that spring and the adjuster together 
just like that. And you can put it on the same way too. It's just, just makes life a little bit easier. So you get your new spring, make sure it's right, because sometimes these springs can be a left and a right. So put that spring back in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook it around. Oh, might have if I do it on the new one, eh? So hook it on the actual part where it goes. You can see it comes through there and now just by pushing the spring up. I'll try and do this on camera, I can't. Nope, I'm gonna have to. I couldn't do it on camera, but by lifting the spring up, you can leave the spring tension and actually have it like that. It just makes your life a little bit easier getting the first spring on. Make sure that's how it sits. Just like that. Now, what we need to do now is, on this one, as you can see, the adjuster has a spring on it too. So we'll undo the adjuster. You don't get that, you don't get the adjuster spring with it, but we don't really need that. Just screw that adjuster all the way down. Because we're putting new brakes on, so it's all the way down. Same thing again. Do you want to get your spring? Put it in the hole and you can actually just push the spring and clip that into place just like that it saves you trying to set the spring in it's just it just makes life a little bit easier now we have the little adjuster plates come off i don't know if you can see that there we go you want to get that back on right because that will stop it from loosening and then you're kind of left with two pieces and what we need to do is put them together it's the top spring that can really cause you a problem so let's see if we can get the top spring in this hole first. It can be awkward, but it should just eventually fall down in there. Anyway, as you can see, I lifted it up and around over that lip. Now we're left with, with everything calm. Uh, just wanna make sure little adjuster plate if it falls off you put that back on that just slides down this now goes into there now this is the tricky part getting this spring into here um, is very very tricky um, because it's very tight there's not a lot of room and it has to go as you can see that's how far we're away we're good oh I don't know if you can see that um, it's just a case of getting pliers and just going for it really there's no there's no other way i have a little spec i have i do have a special tool but unfortunately these brakes are too small to use it um so again i might not be able to show this on camera but i'm just going to hook it with a pair of pliers and try and force it down the hole I'm not going to show this on camera because I'm, I have to get in the way. So as soon as I put that down the hole, I'll turn the camera back on and we'll continue. Okay, it's on. Bit awkward, but it's on. Um, you can put the bottom spring on. That's just kind of up to yourself. I like to do it. I'll show you why in a minute. It's just easier, but it's not really that crucial. Right, now we've got it built. As you can see, we're going to now go back to the car with our new springs and fit it. Right. This is where it can still be a bit tricky, but as you can see, it's going to be a lot easier fitting this on. Now we don't have that uh, bearing in the way, but what we do need to get on is this handbrake cable, which can be really frustrating. Um, again, I'm going to struggle to kind of film it because I'm going to have to get in the way of the camera. But what I need to do is I need to get this, the, the, the kind of the, the nipple at the end has to be over this bracket here. And the way you do it is you push, push the spring back but I, 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 can't, I can't do it and not get in the way of the camera. What you can do on some cars when the spring, this is a very powerful spring, you can push it back and put some sort of vice grips, gives you loads of room. But this, there's just no way I can do it with this. The spring is really quite strong. So um, it's just gonna be one of them awkward, awkward things. All right, so what you can sometimes do, like I've done there, is get, pull the spring back and put like a, um, I've just got a pin nose pliers, but you can kind of use anything and try and get it as far back as you possibly can. Hopefully now that might be enough. 
It's going to be definitely enough to start it and hook it over. And after that, no, it's slipped down now. I've got it in. It's just one of them things that is a nightmare. They're just awkward. They'll either go in really easy or they're just an absolute bloody nightmare. Now what I need to do is get this back just so I can put one thing on it like that. So that's in. Don't worry about this side yet. Make sure it's not cutting any of the rubbers. Just want to rest it in place. Put the pin in from the back. Lift that up so it's right. Put it in that tool again, just to hold it. Put the spring on, push it down, turn it 90 degrees. degrees and there we go now that's kind of in place this is what makes it easy to get this one in place so just push the pin of the cylinder down and then if you're careful enough belt it very gently as you can see put that into place the bottom the bottom uh, spring has come off but that's not a big deal because that's the easiest one to put on out a lot of them put the pin in Do the same thing. I might have to get in the way of the camera here, but you've seen it from the other one. Simple enough. Nothing to it. Now, let's put that into place. Just like that. And there we go. I think these are great, don't get me wrong, but they should have some sort of like little ratchet on them so they hold them in place. Just like the, um, the, the the spring pliers do. Now I just need to put this spring in, which should be fairly straightforward. Of course, now I said that, it won't be. Let's get it. Yeah, I knew it. As soon as I said it, it wouldn't be simple. So what I'm gonna do is push the brakes out of the hole so that I don't have to go as far with the spring under this type of pressure. Now put the shoes back under this lip here, which is where they should be. And that will push the spring in. Just like that. Same with the other one. There we go, lovely. Now it's easy to do that way than any other way. Right, what we need to make sure now is Everything is good, nothing's catching. And uh, put the bearing back on. Put the big washer on first, and the bearing, another washer there. And then this. And you can see just how hard that would have been, especially with the cylinder there. Well, you wouldn't have done it with the cylinder there. Uh, for the sake of one bolt, just take that off. Everything's so much easier. Lovely, tighten it with a bar. Two factory specs, because I know everyone's going to make, oh, yeah, don't do that. That is factory specs. <laughs> so just make sure it spins. It's not getting caught or anything stupid like that. Put the cap back on. Lovely. Now, this work can be bloody annoying too, because we're now going to have to adjust the brakes um and make sure that the obviously we've got a good handbrake now because someone's already taken the lip off there we don't have to take the lip off there but i'm going to put it on first just to see if it does fit over now that's actually more or less perfectly tight i can't see this going to happen the first go this is uh if it is, that's fantastic, but I, I, I can't see it. So I'm just gonna put that on, give it a couple of... Just to make sure everything's in the right place. To be fair, that feels absolutely lovely. 
Now that's never happened to me before, I'm going to check this. But what you're looking for is a slight, very slight kind of pull on it. Just so you know the brakes are rubbing slightly. Not a lot, but slightly. Um, it just comes off too easy because the problem is now, this has kind of been butchered. Whoever did this really butchered that. And I don't know if I'm hitting high spots on here. So this could be pretty annoying. But it, it's going on a bit too easy. So we just adjust that up slightly. So that little adjuster wheel that we took off, we just have to spin that. Um, depend on the car, some goes clockwise, some go anti-clockwise. It just depends on the car. This one goes anti-clockwise. Just adjust it. And what you want to make sure is the brakes are in the middle. So one's not lifted up and one's not lifted down because that will stop the hub from going on either. And you might think, oh, well, it's tight enough. And once the brakes move, it'll be really loose. So we can see everything's in the middle. I've adjusted that maybe two two threads let's see what does now now that's kind of that's too much now okay so this is what could have happened before someone could have had it too much and tried to hit it on which is then broken the glue away from here which is what you just don't want to do that so let's just turn that back maybe half a turn right the brake sat down a bit. And just now, see now. Now I think that feels nice. line up that that can take a few times on and off on and off on and off on and off but it's always good once you got it on just like i did there give it a couple of slaps with the hammer just to make sure everything's seated properly i'm just going to put them in just to hold it a bit better and just to you don't want to force it on with the hammer if it, if it doesn't that went on about 90 percent of the way and couple little taps and went on you don't want to be forcing this on with the hammer but after you've got it on you just want to give it a good hit with the hammer right i think there's something wrong with this hub because that went on most of the way and then got very stiff which shouldn't really get that stiff that quickly like that so I'm just going to slacken it off a little bit more. Try it again. Seems to be worse now. Make sure. Yeah, that's too loose. So this is, it just takes time. This is the problem with these types of brakes. So you go too much and then too little and too much. But what you want to make sure is you don't force this on with the hammer because you could damage these and do exactly the same is maybe what happened before. So you do need to be careful. Yeah, there's definitely something not quite right with this hub, I think. I think there could be maybe a high spot on it.
So just gonna hit it. I didn't hit it on, I'm just gonna hit it to see. Yeah, see that. That is weird. Something that's not quite right. And I mean, it could just be also that it is a tiny bit too tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slacken it off this time. And if it just barely fits again, I'm gonna leave it and then I'll have to take it for a test drive and maybe adjust it from the handbrake. But I wanna make sure that there's no problem with this. We might need a new hub as well. Well, to be fair, that's, that's how I want it now. So I'm happy with that. Could have just been that couple of turns did it. So just to make sure, put these back. These just help locate the wheel. And there's a bit, yeah, I can move it, but it's hard. It's not that hard, you, you, you want that bit of tension there, because that will, as soon as you go down the road, that will wear off quite quickly on the car. And as soon as you put the wheel on, it'll be so much easier as well to turn, as you can see. But there's still that little bit of tension there, which is what you want, which is geared. Before we put the wheel on, we need to bleed this now. Now looking at the far side, someone's definitely been at this and they've kind of, well, they've done it definitely wrong. Because when you look at the far side, there's a big, huge chunk taken out of it where someone's obviously hit it. It's all rusty, so it's been there for a while. But um, yeah, you don't, you don't want to hit these off with a hammer because that's what you can, that's what you can do. It's not, not the thing to do. But all I really have to do with that on this is to, um, is to bleed it. And I've done loads of videos on bleeding brakes and clutches and all that sort of stuff so I don't need to show it and that really is essentially it. after we bled it that's it check the handbrake take it up and down the road maybe readjust the handbrake after a couple of weeks because they'll, they'll, they'll be worn down or even a couple of days just depending on how much driving you do and that's it back shoes and brakes on a 2010 Fiat Panda so any questions down below and all that follow me on Facebook and all that stuff again down below and uh, yeah more videos to come but most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.